carry it. Uh, it it's been a New York Times bestseller. We are carrying it now at InfoWars.com uh, in hardcover. And that's uh, Jim Mars' uh, new book, The Trillion Dollar Conspiracy, How the New World Order, Man-Made Disease, and Zombie Banks Are Destroying America. And, of course, he's also written The Rise of the Fourth Reich, The Secret Societies That Threaten to Take Over America. Uh, he joins us now. But the first thing I want to talk about with Jim Mars is this issue. People like to say it's a Catholic conspiracy or it's a Jewish conspiracy or it's a Masonic conspiracy or it's an alien conspiracy or it's a – the truth is, from my research, I want to get Jim's take on this, it is a – scientific dictatorship conspiracy of predatory psychopaths that, 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 that build governmental and corporate structures to carry out uh, their eugenics operations. It's just like everything Hitler did, he learned from the United States and England, on record. It, it wasn't a thousand, it was tens of thousands of Nazis brought here to run every facet of our government. So it's not a Nazi conspiracy. The Nazis are only one branch of this. Then, why does it come out uh, that... Uh, Israel carried out eugenics against uh, tens of thousands of their children. Uh, it's 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 a very dark system behind all of this, and at the top of all these pyramids, whether it's the Vatican or the Masonic orders or the main Protestant churches, you find the same people interlocking together, and that's how the globalist control society. It's now been declassified, confirming what old timers reported, that it was true our government was funding the Soviets the whole time. Again, it's not our government. They create the enemy to then build up the police state to counter it, just like Al-Qaeda was government created by Zbigniew Brzezinski. I mean, you get where I'm going with this, Jim. And when you get right down to the deepest levels of this, what is the New World Order? Who are the head honchos? Well, you just hit the nail on the head, Alex. Uh, you know, when you ask, well, is it a communist conspiracy? Is it a Zionist conspiracy? It is a, is, is it a Masonic conspiracy? It is it Illuminati? And, and, you know, and the answer is yes, all of the above. <laughs> because, uh, as you know, and as you just very well articulated, and as I have found out by tracking these folks, all the way back through recorded history, there has been a little knot of people, okay, if you want to call them people, you call them psychopaths, and I think, obviously, they, uh, they're they not operating uh, uh, with a full load. They have wanted to control, and it's all about power and control. Uh, everyone talks about greed, and all the corporations are all just greedy, and, and the pharmaceutical corporations, they're just greedy. Well, yeah, they're greedy. But, and they want money, but money to them is not the objective. It's just the means to the objective, and the objective is power and control. They want to control everybody, and this is why, if you'll think about it in the grandest sense uh, of history, that uh, throughout uh, all our recorded history, we find that starting with man's first recorded civilization, at least in the Western Hemisphere, uh, started between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, uh, which, in which is now Iraq. And then it spread north into the Caucasus Mountain regions and then uh, into what is now southern Russia and then into Eastern Europe, to Western Europe. And it spread southward through Palestine into Egypt, Greece, Rome, and again into Western Europe to the British Isles. And then civilization spread to the east coast of the United States. And during the 1800s, of course, there was that huge westward expansion until we filled up North America and reached the Pacific coast. Why were these people all why moving? Why was everybody moving? Wasn't everybody happy with where they were? No. And history makes no secret about it. They were all moving, trying to escape religious and political tyranny. Everybody, they're trying to control them, but we just moved. But, Alex, as you well know more than anybody else, there's no place left to go. We're going to have to turn and fight, right? Yes. You're absolutely right. You know, Jim, you've been one of the deepest researchers on the Nazis and uh, Anthony Sutton's work on record, our government did finance them. I wouldn't say totally controlled them, but had them infiltrated, built them up, told them to invade areas of Europe, 
you know, use the Nazis to create the crisis to offer the UN world government a solution. And of course, Hitler wanted a world government as well and, uh, you know, really brought in the modern Olympics as we know it. But now it's the New York Times last week or two weeks ago. Oh, more Nazis than we thought brought in. It turns out Simon Wiesenthal and all that stuff, it was just a show. They track a few little low level guys, but all the real top Nazis, they weren't just protected. They were put in positions over everything because they were ruthless. They believed in eugenics. They would do what they were told. Uh, so, of course, you wrote Rise of the Fourth Reich. And, uh, man, I tell you, now it's coming out mainstream news about the Bushes and the Nazis. Yeah. It's all, it's all. It's all turning out to be all too true. But let me tell you something that I did not stress, I don't think, hard enough in my book, The Rise of the Fourth Reich, and that you're going to really resonate with. And that's with, we all know that Wall Street, the city of London, these wealthy Western bankers and financiers, they bankrolled Hitler and the Nazis. They created them, okay? So then, wait a minute, why do we have to fight World War II uh, to stop the Nazis. What, what happened there? Well, let me, let me uh, throw this at you. Um, when Hitler took over Germany in January 1933, economically it was on its knees. Half the country was out of work. Inflation was eating them up, hyperinflation. We remember the stories about how these Germans had to take wheelbarrow loads of cash just to buy a loaf of bread. Okay, in two years, two years, Hitler had turned that completely around. Okay, and by the 1936 Olympics of 1936, uh, the Berlin Olympics, uh, Germany was a showcase of economic strength and viability. Why? Okay, how did that happen? Because here's where Hitler made, made the, his greatest mistake. He did not borrow debt-entangled money from the international bankers. He created his own money through the Deutsche Bank, uh, the Reichsmarks, uh, and he used this state-issued money to then pay off people working on public projects like the Audubon, building big buildings and stuff. Everybody got a job. He put everybody back to work. Everybody got a paycheck. They were spending their paychecks. Money was flowing through the economy, and they became very prosperous. The international bankers could not let that continue to exist because then every other country, like the United States, which now is awash in debt, and, and we can't seem to do anything because we're $14 trillion in debt, uh, you know, they had to stop Hitler. And in fact, uh, I did quote in my book, The Rise of the Fourth Reich, Winston Churchill, who said, quote, you must understand that this war is not against Hitler or national socialism, but against the strength, meaning the economic strength, of the German people, which must be smashed once and for all, regardless of whether it's in the hands of Hitler or a Jesuit priest. Okay, in other words, they weren't against national socialism. We, <laughs> they push, they're pushing that in this country right now. And... Uh, but they did not want Germany leading the financial economic order. Well, that was the same reason for World War I on record. Right. Exactly. It all goes back to the money. But, it's again, it's not just money per se. It's the control and power that money brings. Well, it's the controlling of the issuance of currency and credit. Uh, I want to get your take on the time we've got left in this segment. I want to come back and get into a, a WikiLeaks that you've been hot on the trail of. I want to get your perspective on that and a lot more on what's happening with the Trillion Dollar Conspiracy, your New York Times bestselling book. Uh, but uh, what's your take on the TSA overall? Oh, listen, this, this is an agency we need to do away with. Uh, this is just insane. Let me tell you something. We're coming right off of talking about Hitler and the Nazis. Uh, the Gestapo was bad enough. If they caught you, got you in their clutches, they, yes, they would take you to their underground dungeons, and they would commit unspeakable acts, okay? But even the Gestapo, even the SS, even Hitler's Nazis did not have the audacity to try to strip down and grope the genitals 
of the German people or the Europeans of the 1930s and 40s. They knew they wouldn't allow, be allowed to get away with and that. And the government always try. wants more, more, more. If they get away with this, what's next? Well, we know federally funded warrantless blood draws on the side of the highway. Right, and by the way, I, you know, it, it, I've got to, I've got to hand it to you, Alex. Every time I'm looking for the cutting edge of the news, you know, those stories that are being downplayed by the mainstream media, but that are so important to understanding of what's going on in the world. And every time I find one of these stories, inevitably it tracks back to info wars or prison, prison planet. You're doing a great job. Well, God bless you. That's why the mainstream media and COINTELPRO are after us 24/7. But God takes everything and turns it into a blessing. We want them to continue the attacks. They're bringing us all these new listeners. God bless them. Jim Mars is our guest. Great to have him with us. Started out at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram as a uh, criminal beat reporter driving around with the police radio. He was uh, reporting, you know, back uh, during the uh, JFK assassination, he taught the first uh, course in college on the JFK assassination from the conspiracy perspective. And now look at the polls. Upwards of 90% today say the official story of the JFK assassination is a fraud and a lie. Uh, before we get uh, into uh, the WikiLeaks, the other issues I raised, Jim, in this short segment, uh, what do you think of uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano or Raul Rivera, all these other people coming out and saying they don't believe the official story of 9-11, that has got to really scare the system that uh, their big enchilada, their big event, is being exposed. Uh, I know it's incredible. Everything, you, you know, we, we touched on the TSA thing, which is just absolutely incredible, and, and everything else that's going on. And, of course, the wars are continuing in Afghanistan and Iraq, and then they, they, and the guys are coming back. They're going to have Gulf War Syndrome 2-3. Uh, it's just everything. And the money that's being siphoned out of the system, uh, and, and it all goes back to 9-11. But, Alex, let me tell you something. Having lived through the Kennedy assassination and then dealt with that for so many years, for about 15 years, after the Kennedy assassination, which was November the 22nd, 1963, for 15 years, it was just considered impolite to even bring it up and discuss it in decent company. You just weren't supposed to talk about it. And I submit to you, Alex, that we are in a somewhat similar situation today with 9-11. You're just not supposed to talk about it. And if you do bring it up, then you must be some kind of conspiracy kook. But let me tell you something. Just like the Kennedy assassination, 9-11 is not going to go away, okay? Because the evidence, the questions, the inconsistencies, the anomalies, are they make the Kennedy assassination look like truly a deep, dark mystery. And today, as you well know, because you and I both have looked deeply into the Kennedy assassination, if, in general sense, the details we don't know, but in a general sense, Anyone who studies it can now know exactly what happened in the Kennedy assassination, which was a coup d'etat in the United States. But it makes that look like a really deep mystery compared to the in-your-face evidence concerning 9-11. And so they can't keep it hidden forever. And Geraldo and others, Janet Napolitano, even, hey, six out of the ten 9-11 commissioners uh, have stated that, uh, you know, raised questions about 9-11. In fact, um, last year, uh, in a book entitled The Ground Truth by John Farmer, and, and John Farmer is not a conspiracy. He was the head lawyer on the commission. He was the head lawyer. He was the senior counsel. And he says, quote, in the course of our investigation and the national response to the attacks, the 9-11 commission staff discovered that the official version of what had occurred that morning, that is what government military officials had told Congress, the commission, the media, and the public about who knew what and when was almost entirely and inexplicably untrue. Now, that's the head of the 9 11 Commission. Amazing information, and I do what you just did all the time. Uh, Janet Napolitano has not come out for 9 11 Truth. It was Andrew Napolitano. Right. But I do the same thing all the time. He always jokes and calls her his cousin. 